The main goal of a good piece of software is to help customers with a specific problem that they are having. And oftentimes these customers give us the creators of this piece of software money as a mode of payment to use that software. But one big problem is that we need a payment system in order to collect payments from users online. And that is exactly what I will be showing you how to do in this video. And if you head over to the screen, you can see the main demo of what we will be using. We're basically going to use Stripe JS as a mode of collecting payments from the users to purchase our courses in this example. So that if the user wants to purchase the course, they can just press it over here and it links us directly to the Stripe checkout page, which once they pay for, they are officially a customer and they have access to any sort of thing that they want. And if we head over to our Excalidraw, we need to talk about a couple of things before getting into the code, which is not a lot actually, so you don't have to worry about that too much. How the hell does this work? So the main parties involved in this Stripe checkout page is obviously the user, the item that they are buying, as well as obviously Stripe JS API. And let's just put everything in the middle. And all of these are intertwined together, like a cool little triangle, you could say. And all of them being stored into a database. So that we obviously need to remember the user, what they bought, so that maybe we have to send them an email or something like that. And so what is going on here is that we have to have an item, whether it be a su subscription service or a one-time payment of a course, for example, which we will be working on. And we have to identify the user through maybe authentication. And finally, we should be using the Stripe.js API as a mode of handling the payment of this item by this user. So hopefully, I did not confuse you too much, but if you are, I will leave the Stripe documentation down below for more detail on how this works. And with that being said, we can actually just get started with the actual Stripe setup. And look, I am totally assuming here that you have a database set up with an item. We will be selling this course, as you saw earlier, where we are grabbing the price and we are storing it into a database and we're grabbing all that data. So if you don't have a thing to sell yet and you haven't set up your full application with a way of the boilerplate to actually sell something, then do that first and then come back to this video. However, for now, we are going to be selling this course model where we're grabbing the data here, mostly the price, and we're setting that as the price that people can buy from. And actually, the only things we need to write in our database, so for you, this may be a little bit different, but I'm using Prisma DB, is a purchase model as well as a Stripe customer model. We're gonna get these over and done with before we set up the Stripe stuff because it's gonna be a lot, a whole lot easier. And so to do that, we need to just write model purchase just like this. And then in here, we need to have an identifier of string and an ID of at default UUID. So it's a unique identifier. We need to also have the user ID, which is why it's important to actually have a authentication system so that you can identify who the user is. We will also need a course ID with the string as well. So this course ID is what we will sell, right? So in here, if we go back to course, we're grabbing the course ID because it's the thing that we will be selling, right? So whatever you're selling, you need to grab that ID. We will also grab the actual all the courses. So course, course like this at relation with the fields of course ID, a references of ID, and then on delete of cascade. Now let's just see what's going on here. I think we added one too many brackets. So let's do that. There we go. Finally, we need a created at date time at default now. So we're just getting the date. And finally, an at at index of course ID. So this is the purchase model. So when we are purchasing the thing that we are buying, this is exactly what we will have to do. And next up, we actually have to create the model Stripe customer. And trust me, this is all we need for the database. So don't, don't worry too much. So in here, we need to just create a customer for a way to track what they bought and the things that they bought. And so again, as usual, we'll write at string, at the ID, at default UUID. We'll also grab the user ID of string. And actually this will be a unique one just in case we will also have a stripe customer id of string unique and like both up here we need the created at date time 
as well as the updated at date time at updated at. Basically, this is the most important part because this is the identifier of the Stripe customer so that this is the data that we will be sending to the Stripe JS. And look, I know that this is annoying as hell right now because it took us some time to set things up, but trust me, um, we got the annoying part out of the way and we can actually just get started with the installation and the setup of our Stripe so that we can start freaking collecting payments and making some freaking money. So what we need to do is head over to stripe.com, go to dashboard, and in here, we need to create a new account, okay? So I'm just gonna call this example because we are just creating it and put the operation country as the one you see fit. It will take you to another page. And I actually, I called this example, so it's gonna be whatever you named it over here. So we need to go to developers over here. And within this, we need to go into our API keys and we need to grab both the secret key as well as the other type of key. And so we need to reveal this test key, okay? And let's just copy this and let's just go back into our application, our .env file and in here, in our stripe underscore API underscore key, paste this in here. And to grab our webhook secret, we need to go into our webhooks and within this, we need to write test in local environment. And in here, we need to set up a couple of things. And so obviously the first thing is, if you haven't done this already, I already have this uh, the CLI installed, but go to the documentation of Stripe and set the CLI up in your homebrew. So in your, or in your local computer, because that's how you can actually talk to Stripe directly. So just click download the CLI. If you don't have the native Stripe installed into your computer, it's really easy to do. You have a couple of commands, but to know if it works, just write Stripe login into your terminal. And if you're getting like a small error, that means that you need to uh, set it up. So for us, we just need to write Stripe login like this. And you can see we have a pairing code. And if we go into this link, we will get verified that this is us so we can continue. So allow access. And there we go. We just got verified. And by now this should be checked off. You can see it says complete, which is exactly what we want. And we can move over to the next step. And in here, we can see that we have to forward your events to a webhook. Now the webhook is where our checkout sessions and where we will verify that this is the actual application that we will be using. So in here, we need Stripe to listen to forward to. So we actually have to make a couple of changes, but for us, it's Stripe listen dash dash forward dash two. And within this, we need to write a local host dash 3000. So that's the one I am running in. And for us, it is slash API slash webhook, just like this. And we can just run it. And once we ran that, we can see over here that we have a webhook secret ID. What we need to do is grab this ID and put it in, in here. And again, this basically listens for events in our API webhook, which we will set up eventually, but there's where we will set up the payments and all of that. And so as of now, what we need to do is actually run npm install Stripe so that we can set up everything else. So run npm Stripe so we can continue with setting up Stripe in our actual pieces of code. And this may actually take some time to do, so don't worry too much about it. And okay, cool. So as of now, we have set up Stripe. We have logged into Stripe and we have verified that this piece of code is connected to the Stripe event so that we can start setting up payments. However, we have not done anything specific to, you know, have the code to let the user purchase something. And to do that, we need to go into our lib folder and in here have a stripe.ts just like this. And within the code, we need to set up a connection to stripe.com. And to do that, we need to import stripe from stripe with an export const stripe just like that with a new stripe equal to process.env.stripe underscore secret underscore key. And if we open this up, we can get the version of the Stripe. And for us, the API version is 2023-10-16. And this is very, very important because if we do not have this, then um, it will not work. 
and I think we just need to write an exclamation point here just to make it work. And for us, we're using TypeScript, so we are gonna write it as true. And that's it, that's all we have to do right here. And basically, again, what's going on here is we're connecting to our Stripe secret key from our environment variable, which is actually, we need to grab this just to make sure. Yeah, we made a mistake. So it's Stripe API key, so make sure it's the env variable. And with that done, we can get started with the checkout session for our Stripe. By checkout session, I simply mean when we click this, we wanna go to a checkout page. And to do that, we have to have the data to have the price, the name, and all that fun stuff. Because remember, right, in my actual deployed application, we are going to a Stripe checkout page where the user wants to obviously purchase something. So we need a way to purchase things like the price of the course, the name and description of the course, or the item that we are selling. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And so to do that, we need to go into our app, API, courses, course ID, and within here, I'm just gonna create a new folder called checkout. So for you, this will be whatever, wherever the dynamic or the singular page where you're selling things is in your API, okay? So for us, we have a course ID, obviously for the course ID and identification number for the course. And so here's where we wanna have our checkout session because we need to have the specific details of the course for that to happen. So let's just create that. And within here, we can have a route.ts and we can get started with the nitty gritty of the checkout session for our app. So we firstly need to grab authentication from for us, it's at slash next auth. We need to grab the database from at slash lib. We obviously need to import stripe from at slash lib stripe. We also need next response. And finally, we need the actual big boy stripe from stripe. And within here, we need to write export async function post because it's a post request to Stripe. And in here, we need a request of a request with, for us, it's at least the params of params course ID string. And let's open this. And here we have the try catch block. And in the try block, we need to get the user firstly. So const user equals to await auth, just like this. And obviously we need a way to verify if there is no user because this is very important, right? If there is no user, we cannot have a checkout session because we cannot identify if they purchased it in the first place. So if there is no user, return new next response unauthorized with a status of 4.1 or whatever. Actually, let's just, just in case, have a, if there's no user, dot user, dot ID, just in case. And now we can get started with displaying the course that we want them to purchase. So const course is equal to await db dot course dot find first, open this. It's actually find unique, my bad. And here we have a where ID, is equal to params.course ID. So the specific ID that we are grabbing from the course and is published for me is true. So these are very, very, very specific to my actual application. Because I am in a dynamic route for my course ID. So this is the identification number. And by this, I mean, we are, since we are in this specific course, you know, we are in the authentication uh, course it has an identification ID, right? And so we're telling the code to grab the specific ID of this course and display all the data. So here we're just grabbing the course ID data from the params, which is from the HTTPS. And we're getting this published, which you don't need because this published is only specific to this application because I need the course to be published, right? And next up, what we need to do is let's just open this one more time. And in here, we need to actually write course purchase. We need to create the the variable of purchase, and we need to grab the database dot purchase from our Prisma DB, which remember we created the purchase functionality and a find unique again, and then open this up where, where we need the actual user ID underscore course ID. Open this, where we need the user ID, which for us the identifier is user.id. This is very specific, okay? Because it's my authentication. 
course ID is equal to params.course ID, just like this. So again, this is how I authenticate users. Okay, it's the user await auth. This is my next auth. If you're using Clerk, for example, it's gonna be different. And if you're using a different sort of thing to purchase, that's obviously gonna be different as well. But hopefully you're, you're kind of grasping the concepts that we are using. And for some error handling, we need to write if there is a purchase already. So if the user purchased this, we can run return new next response already purchased with a status of 400 because we don't want them to buy it twice, right? That's going to be dumb. As well as if there is no course, right? If there's, we cannot find the course, then we can just say course not found. And next up, which is the most important part, we need to create the line items to display exactly what we need in the course checkout, right? Where we have the price of the course, the names and description of the course, and the currency that we will be using for the users to purchase our course with. And to do that, we need to write const line items. Actually, let's do this way. Is equal to stripe dot checkout dot session create params dot line item in brackets is equal to and then here we have the data so first things first we need the quantity so for us if we're buying one thing it's going to be one obviously and then the price data we are grabbing the currency which for us we're just going to write usd this is the god bless america within this we need to write the product data which is again very important and dynamically, what we can do is the course, course name. For us, we have that data. So course.title is how is the course name that we need. So course.title, as well as the description being course.description for us. Okay. For you, you need a way to store that and dynamically do that. But let's see what's going on here. Not assignable. That's fine. We need to just write, I guess, an exclamation point here. There we go. And outside of this, we can just write the unit amount which is the course dot price. You can not dynamically do this. Like if you want to do 22, which actually we would have to do it like this, I guess. There we go. But you want to do it dynamically. That's why I'm saying have the database ready and a way to store data, such as the price of the thing you're trying to sell, the name, the description, have those ready and then watch this. If you haven't done that, please do it because it'll make your life so much easier. For us, we dynamically did that by having the course.price just like this. And actually what we can do is we need to do is do math.round. And within this, we have the course.price times 100. And why we're doing it times 100 is the mode of counting by Stripe is in cents. So if you write 22 like this, it would be 22 cents. So you'd have to write this for $22, which is very annoying. So instead, what you can do is just write this instead where you're just multiplying it by 100. So if it's like a $20 course, you can just have $20 as the price of the course. And we can write let Stripe customer is equal to await. And we're grabbing the Stripe customer from our database dot find unique. Open this up where... We have the user ID, of course, as per usual. So user.user.id for us. And we are selecting the Stripe customer ID, which will be true. And once we're done with this, we need to have an if statement where if we do not have a Stripe customer, and I know this is a lot of handling of Stripe customers and, and managing errors, but this is how we want to write production code. And in here we can write const customer so we're creating a customer is equal to await stripe customer customers so it's with an s dot create so we're creating that customer where we have the user's email right so user dot user dot email and one exclamation point just changes the whole thing it's crazy and still within the let customer stripe if there is no stripe customer we need to create that customer and so the stripe customer then will be equals to await db dot stripe customer dot create with the oopsie so stripe customer dot create just like this data 
the data we are grabbing is what? The user ID as well as the Stripe customer ID. And the customer ID is basically just the email, so you don't have to worry about that too much. And finally, the main thing we have left to do is outside of this, so outside of this, if no Stripe customer, we need to create the session for the payment. And to do that, we need to write const session is equal to await stripe dot checkout dot sessions dot create. It's like this. And then here we have the customer, which we thankfully got from stripe customer dot stripe customer ID. We have the line underscore items, which we thankfully created up here. So we have the quantity, the price and the unit amount. The mode for us will be payment. However, I know that you can set up subscriptions. If you have a subscription service, you can do that, but we're doing a one-time payment. The success URL for us will just be this. So for us, we're just grabbing the URL. So this could actually just be, for us, let's just do localhost 3000. So I'm just, I used to do it dynamically because if I'm, product, if I'm in production, it will be a lot easier, but this is what I can do. And for the failure cancel URL, we can do the same thing, but instead of this, it just takes us directly to the homepage. That way it's a lot easier, but you can also set up specific pages if you want, like a success page where you, you know you successfully purchased it with like a thank you page, but we know we don't have to focus on that too much. And finally, we need the metadata, which is, very, very, very important. And this metadata is just data within the data. So for example, we need the course ID from the Stripe, so course.id, as well as the user ID from user.user.id. And this is the data that we will be sending to the Stripe page. Finally here, let's just return new next response. It's actually just dot JSON. And then the URL of session.url. It's not new, it's just like this. And then the here, in the error, we can just write console.log the checkout. So we know that is this exact error as well as displaying the error and return new next response, internal error like this with a status of 500. And I know this may be a little bit confusing, so we can just kind of go through this step by step real quick. So essentially, we are grabbing the course that we want to sell. We're grabbing the purchases, such as the course ID and the user ID. And then we're obviously just checking if there's the purchase or the course. And if there isn't, then we send an error. And once we have that, we're creating the checkout page where we have the price, the description, everything like that. And then we're creating a Stripe customer. And finally, over here, we are creating the session, the actual session where we have everything such as whether it's a payment or subscription service, uh, sending the metadata. And then after we sell the course or failure of the course, we're sending them to a specific URL. It's actually in here, we can just write, let's just write success like this equals one. And then here, same thing. So whatever, we don't need this, the failure one. And so the next thing we need to do is create the webhook session. What the webhook session will allow us to do is let Stripe have a way to communicate. So it basically just allows Stripe to have an address where it can communicate with our API. And so to do that, still within our API folder, within this API, right? Create a webhook. Within this, we can have route.ts. And real quick on the webhook, this is the address that we wrote in our dashboard. So this is what it is, okay? So the events that is going on, it is being sent to Stripe listen forward to localhost 3000 slash API such a webhook. That's the one we wrote. And within the webhook, we can start writing the code that we need to, to talk to Stripe. And within here, we can write import, again, Stripe from Stripe. We can import the actual stripe like this, the little stripe, sorry, from libstripe. stripe. We can have the import database from db. We also need the import headers from next slash headers. And finally, next response for the actual responses that we need. And within this, we need to write export async function post with a request of request. 
and open this up. And here we need to grab everything. So const body is equal to await request dot text. We also need the const signature, which is equals to headers dot get stripe signature. It's actually request dot headers. Oops. Dot get like this and then have that as a string. We also have to create the event. So let event equal to stripe dot event. And then let's just try sending that data. So try the event is equal to stripe dot webhooks dot constructive event. And then here we have the body, we have the signature. And finally, right, in our environment variable, we have the Stripe webhook secret. And let's just make sure that that's the right one. So Stripe webhook secret. So let's just copy this, paste it in here like this. And outside of this bracket in here, we need to catch this, which is an error of any for now and return new next response webhook error and let's actually you know what let's make this dynamic so we can add the specific error that we need we have the error dot message and a status of 400 just like that and so the last few things we need to do is get the user the session so that we can create the purchase in our webhook so the first thing we obviously need is the const session is equal to event dot data dot object as stripe dot checkout dot session and then we need the const user id is equal to the session dot metadata dot user id so we're grabbing this the metadata which we need to write a question mark here and over here everything here is coming from this checkout page okay we're just sending it here so that the the api or the stripe can directly talk to our page and the metadata is in here. We're basically just grabbing course ID and user ID from the metadata. So with that being said, we actually need to create a course ID with the same thing. So course ID, metadata dot course ID. And finally, we just need to create some events. So if event dot type is equals to checkout dot session dot completed. So if the payment goes through, and then again, if we have, if there is no user ID or if there is no course ID, so we're just checking one more time, then we can just return a new next response with an invalid session and missing details. And then we can write await DB. And then here we're actually creating the purchase event. Okay. So this is the main part it's where we are just having the data with the course ID of course ID and a user ID of user ID, just like that. And finally, we can have an else statement here where we are just returning new next response, a valid event with a status of 200, just like that. And finally, if the, everything goes through, we can just write return next response, success, just like that. Or actually even better, we can just write null. So this is all there is to this page. And so we have all the code, right, for grabbing the stripe checkout page and all that fun stuff however if we go back to our page how do we actually go to the purchase page right because it's one thing to want to purchase the course and say hey i want i want to buy this freaking course but how are we linking it to our checkout session page and to do that we need to create the link to go to that checkout session and I'm not gonna write this out just because, you know, it's I don't think it's really needed. But to do that, we just need the uh, posting of the response to course ID checkout, as well as the purchase here, which comes from format from the format lib, which is just the currency over here. By the way, everything here will be left down below. But basically, we're just grabbing the USD price format and in here, we're grabbing the price and the user ID. And we're just displaying a button with the on click functionality of taking us to the checkout page. And so just make sure that you have the login and you've run Stripe listens. So in here you are directly listening so that when we do run this, let's just refresh real quick. 
we can just go into here and purchase the course. And okay, we're getting an error. What's the 400 error here? Invalid session. So we don't have a user ID or a course ID. Hmm. Let's just see what's going on. And if we check out what's going on here, we are getting the customer created. However, the webhook doesn't seem to be getting through. So maybe it's something in the middleware. So if there's no user or user.id, then do that. But we're already authorized, which is kind of weird, actually. Okay. So I think I messed something up big. And I think I put two Ys in my API key. Um, has this been causing it? <gasps> it has been. Okay, okay, okay. So I just messed up the whole API key. So what I did to change it, and I'm sorry for all the mistakes, is firstly, we have this version of the API here. And make sure, okay, when you're watching this, in your package.json, you're using my exact version for my Stripe. So here you can see in my Stripe version, it's 14.16. If you don't have this, it will not work. You'll have to do the upgraded version, but this is the one I'm using right now. However, this one should be working as of now. So if we go back again, go to courses, go to authentication full course over here. And within the intro, you just have purchase course over here. It should take you to this page, okay? And let's just test it out. So 42424242. And then month we can just have is 11, 20. And let's just say we have this. Um, we can just pay for the course, I guess, with this fake pieces of data. And hopefully it goes through and it reroutes us back to our page with the course hopefully purchased. Perfect. The course was purchased because I know that because it's displayed here. And if we go back into our uh, terminal here inside of here, you can see in the webhook, they created everything. And in the Stripe checkout page, we can hopefully also see that the event went through. Perfect. So that's all we did. And if you're still confused on the purchase button, okay, I will leave this down below. We are just linking and going to the response.data URL, which is essentially the URL in here that is given to us when we want to create a new session. And the format price is just a much easier way. So the format price is over here where we're just having the price of the course with the USD currency. But again, I apologize for all the confusion, but that is all to the Stripe uh, payment system. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, then please ask it in the discord group or in the comment section down below. But again, all the code for this actual entire platform, if you want to know, is down below for you to copy. I want you to copy it because, you know, you can learn more that way. But yeah, again, we connected to Stripe. We created the checkout page. We also created the webhook page and we linked it to the Stripe uh, API key. Make sure you have the date corrected as well as not making any mistakes with the API keys. And in addition, we have the checkout session so that we can pay for the things. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy coding. Good luck. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.